line to everybody. Welcome to the Brownwood Lions Coaching Show here on KOXC. I am Derek Stuckley along with Brownwood Lions Head Football Coach Athletic Director Sammy Burnett. The 2023-24 school sports year is over with. We'll see y'all back in August. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, a, uh, not a whole lot on the docket to talk no, about, no, is there? Not it? a whole lot going on. Uh, well, let's start with off season. All right. Kids are doing a tremendous job, but this week we're spending our time testing. It's important that we get our measurements. We start off season, you know, uh, in late no, late December. Try to get a test on our kids on where they're at strength wise, what they maintained over the course from the summer through the football season, uh, and then uh, of course going into basketball season, all that kind of stuff. Try to get our tests and then measure where we are uh, if we've maintained or what we need to do. Uh, but we have finished another off season, uh, so we're testing this week. A bench press this morning. Uh, tomorrow or Wednesday, we will do uh, some power clean, and then Friday we'll do some squat, and uh, then we'll do our speed on Tuesday, Thursday, and our, our explosion with vertical jumps and heights and weights and all that. See how much we're growing. So that's an important part. I really like that part. Uh, it's amazing how many kids we have benching over 225 as a group uh, of course we have some that are benching a lot more and some that are benching a little less but for the most part uh, when you look at the mean the mean you know what the mean is that's the average Stuckley uh, we have a lot of kids over that 225 245 250 mark so that's a big deal so excited about the start we have with that this morning uh, of course next week we have Monday off because of the holiday and then uh, Tuesday uh, we have the kids and then they do their final exams and that's it so uh, winding down uh, the spring off season or athletic period is what I like to call it, uh, because all of our sports have wrapped up and we're looking, uh, getting ready to start the, the next part, which is summer strength conditioning. So how does all that work schedule-wise? What do y'all do in the summer? In the summer, well, we, we the girls always go first. Uh, we'll be at the, the junior high as well. We start about 9 o'clock, uh, get our, our weights and running in. Uh, normally with the younger kids that are coming in, and coming, uh, you know, our junior high kids, we put them out there running first while the uh, older guys are lifting, and then we switch it, and then uh, they'll do their running, and then the little guys will go in there and do their weights. Uh, we also have certain days where we're working on seven on seven uh, with our sports specific stuff, so about 30 minutes out there. Uh, one thing that we are implementing uh, coming through the pipeline with the UIL is that uh, wet bulb gauging temperature and humidity and trying to make sure we're safe for kids so uh, i think that's going to be something that happens in the future with the uil mandate uh, but right now that's recommended so uh, as you know dr young is very proactive in things that we do he said why wait let's go ahead and start uh, get it worked out and uh, make sure we have a plan for the summer uh, which what does that entail uh, uh, when it comes to your length of practice uh, water breaks, how many water breaks you have, the length of the water breaks, uh, the clothes that the kids wear, uh, cooling stations, uh, whether it's towels, uh, ice towels, whether it's an uh, ice bath uh, where you put uh, shade, tent, that kind of stuff, which is a lot of things that we already do, so it made me feel really good. A lot of things that they're asking you to do, we already have already implemented and are doing, but yet uh, just more proactive where everybody will have the ability to look at an app to check this G, uh, it's, it's WBGT, I think, the, the, the measurement that they use to check to make sure that the temperature is not too bad for kids to get outside and do things. Now, there's levels of that, of course, uh, that can reduce your practice time. Uh, it can increase your breaks. Uh, it can even limit you to being able to go outside or not. So uh, things that we're, we're doing. Uh, to make sure our kids are safe so uh, excited about the fact that that we're going to have the ability to check that every day and know exactly what we need to do to take care of our kids it's important you don't want anybody to have heat strokes but like Kirk Cameron our trainer does a phenomenal job of making sure we're hydrated he always has Gatorade which has electrolytes and things you need for your body we always have water uh, we always have a shaded area a place that they can they can relax uh, and like I said we're going out there maybe uh, with some misters possibly if needed and some just some cooling zones is what they're called is something that we're looking looking into for that so all in all that's new uh, but we're going to be proactive in that area to make sure our kids are safe and uh, have a great plan going into the summer didn't they have a little bit of that at the seven on seven state tournament they last did year? 
Uh, but they paused us, merely put us on mm-hmm. pause. We had about two minutes left in the game, and they said it's going to be it could be an hour, two hours, it could be the rest of the day. Uh, but once they figured out that, that there are cooling areas, we have cooling zones for our kids. They're sitting in the shade. Uh, they have water. They have things that they need to stay cool and hydrate. Uh, they kicked it back off, and boy, we had to start back up real quick. We almost let our kids go, and then two minutes later, we're off and running. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's like I said, it's new. A lot of colleges use it already. A lot of the big metropolitan areas use it. It's not based on, uh, uh, they say, competition. It's different, so you don't hate the way you do your competition, they leave that out so they can still play their games. Uh, but a lot of schools in the Metroplex that I noted last year were starting games later because of that index, whatever. the. But like I said, there's several variables that they put together, and you can punch that in, and that app will calculate the score. Once it gets to a certain score, there's certain things that you have to do to make sure you're keeping kids safe. So. Uh, well, like I said, we're proactive on that. We're jumping into it uh, like a like a ice bad. We're just going to jump all in and make sure our kids are, are protected and safe. And, you know, you have kids that are outside all the time that doesn't bother, but you mm-hmm. have kids that aren't outside all the time and they're in a lot of air conditioning, whether it's work or whatever, and they get out in that heat and all of a sudden you can get heat exhaustion, so we don't want that. So we're uh, taking measures to make sure our girls and boys, uh, all the way from the little bitties to the uh, next one out the doors, are taken care of. Good. Very important, very important stuff there. Uh, we mentioned 7-on-7 seven seven a little bit. We got some league action tonight. Yeah, just a little bit. We'll be uh, kicking off our second week of league play. A uh, little bracket for you. Brownwood will play San Saba, Dublin, and Comanche back-to-back. That starts at 6 o'clock, so that's 6, 6.45, and 7.30. Our JV team will play Early's Varsity at 6, San Saba's Varsity at 6.45, and Dublin's Varsity at 7.30. That's on the uh, soccer field. And then, of course, all of our games are on the north side of the inside of the track. Uh, we stay there. And then our freshman team will play at 630 against Dublin's JV. And then at six, uh, 730 against San Saba's JV. So we got all three of our teams in action, uh, stepping up a level and playing a little older opponent, which is good for them. So uh, weather's going to be nice, maybe a little hot, but we're going to get out there and throw and catch a little bit and see if we can't defend. Good deal. And then this Saturday, it's a first qualifying tournament. Yeah, we're going to maybe do a little different look. You know, we sort of put our linebackers in a bad position in 7-on-7. Seven seven. They're not asked to drop and cover receivers coming across the middle and all this kind of stuff that you do in 7-on-7, seven seven, especially when it's a little speedy jitterbug doing it. Uh, their their job is to fill the C-gap. You know, that's mm-hmm. 90% of their job is to, to force a run. So uh, we may put some uh, – Back in guys, take a couple of safeties or corners and put them at linebacker. At least prob- probably when we get to Mineral Wells on Saturday uh, to give ourselves a better opportunity to cover some of those guys because as we're learning, <coughs> we know it. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we know it of course, but we allow our linebackers to go play. But we have some pretty thick linebackers, real, you know, big strong kids that are run fitters, and uh, they don't, they're not at. There's a disadvantage for them. Like I said, covering a slot receiver that's a little jitterbug out of the backfield, sort of putting them in a position of failure. So that's something that Coach Jones and I talked about. We've done it in the past. We're probably going to implement that at least uh, for our, our qualifiers. And, uh, again, our first ki- our qualifier kicks off sometime on Saturday. <coughs> they haven't <coughs> – I'm sorry. They haven't sent us that information yet, but as soon as I get it, hopefully we'll have it by Wednesday. We better have it by Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> That'll give us something to talk about. Don't really know. Don't have an idea who's in our pool. What time we play, who we play, know that we're going to be at uh, Mineral Wells, though. So we'll figure it out, I guess, Wednesday. And it'll probably be in the morning. I guarantee it'll be in the morning. We'll <laughs> oh, get it. They morning. usually put us at the – if you drive the furthest, they usually put you at the first game in the morning. So we'll load up in whatever time we need to and make sure they support our kids. So, Well, as far as 7-on-7 seven seven goes, uh, any kids that have stood out to you so far kind of caught your eye? Well, uh, right off the bat, our receiving core uh, – First group of guys we've been putting out there have been Carson No and Grant Gray on the outside, both 6'3", 6'4", kids that can really go get a football, got great speed, great strength. Our slot receivers are uh, Stone Ratliff and Aaron Edmonds, both doing a really good job. They played for us last year, uh, learn, starting to learn their positions more, and, and they're just they're, they're pretty dominant. So to be blessed to have four guys across the board that know the plays and knows what's going on, go out there and run and catch is big. Uh, quarterback, is, or again, are, are platooning with uh, Braden Stacks and Roy McNeese, so they'll still get continue to get work in, see how they perform under pressure. 
give them every opportunity they can to go out there and succeed and face every t you know type of situation they can in seven on seven. Uh, and on the defensive side, Noah Gonzalez will be out again. I don't know that he'll play on uh, Saturday in the in the seven on seven at Mineral Wells. He uh, got nine stitches to the eye uh, the other night. Kid from San Saba it was. He got seven stitches to his eye. That kid caught the ball, and Noah's used to coming downhill and forcing the tackle and mm -hmm. tried to hold up. The kid turned, and they butted heads pretty hard. So he, remind he, him of the helmets. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah they, they have those little soft helmets, but they don't cover the eyeball and all that. Yeah. So uh, there's a good chance he may not even play on Saturday. But he is the leader on our defense right now. When you talk about uh, formations and motions and, and back out of the backfield and then shifting, and there's all kinds of variables that go into that, he's the one that gets us set defensively. Uh, so with him being out, it'll give us an opportunity to get someone else up there, uh, let them learn some leadership skills to make sure we're in the right spot. And, and it, it, here's the thing, and what we tell them all the time, if you make a mistake on the call and we're in a certain coverage that's maybe not as conducive for what they're trying to do for to, to us, as long as we're in the same coverage, we're better off than where if we got one trying to do one and one side trying to do another. So communication is huge, and, uh, you know, just get out there and, be on the same page so that we're all doing the same thing. You know, Kenya McDowell play, had some time last year at cornerback, uh, really doing a good job, uh, pleased with what he's doing, uh, Has understands his position, works, work, continues to work on his form. Uh, people see him out there. He's, he's probably 6'8", I mean 5'8", five, 5'9", five, not 6'8", sorry. He's short like me, but, man, he can go make plays. So a lot of times they try to pick on him. Uh, throw that deep ball up because of his height, and he just goes and makes plays. So really proud of him. You know, uh, Keenan Brooks on the other side is doing a good job. Raven Prada, uh, Kevin Webster, Durham Brown. Uh, I mean, you can throw those receivers over there. Stone Ratliff, Carson No, Grant Gray, Aaron Edmonds, they all intermix. They can play both sides. Linebackers look really good. They just don't look as good in 7-on-7 seven seven because they're sort of out of their element. But uh, all in all, I think we've got a great group of skill kids. Uh, that are going out there and learning to work together. They got good leadership, and of course, you know we got a couple of running backs that that they don't get to do a ton in seven on seven way we do things uh, because that's not what we do on Friday nights. But uh, Levi Pearson and, and Trey Mosley are those two guys. So we got we got a group of stallions. So it's going to be fun to get a, get out there and and uh, see them compete. But it's also going to be frustrating because, as you know. A lot of stuff going on in seven on seven mm -hmm. that you do not see on Friday night that I cannot stand. <laughs> so I have to go to Mineral Wells and bite my tongue and not get frustrated when other teams are having success playing whatever it is, whatever it's called, <laughs> holy gully, wall on. Well, it'll be my first chance. <laughs> chance to, <laughs> it'll be my first chance to see the guys tonight. I'll be out there, and kind of get an idea of what. Where to were you last Monday? I had to go cover a meeting, so I didn't get oh. to make it. Well, it was Tuesday anyway. I didn't play my you know, I don't fuss or complain about my schedule or work schedule. You don't? Um, because when I show up, you're always there. So I'm like, <laughs> that dude works harder than I do. Well, I wasn't there and last I thought Tuesday. I, worked, so. I thought I worked pretty hard. But, man, everywhere I go, there's old stuff. I even went to the city hall to a meeting where I got uh, awarded, and there's Stuckley. Yeah. Of all places to run into you, City Hall yeah. was not where I expected. Well, I'm smart. Maybe yeah. one day I'll be in City Hall. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe so. Cleaning the room up for something when everybody's done. <laughs> it's good to have future plans. That's right. All right, anything else we need to mention? Today? Well, we better talk about NASCAR because there's a big giant elephant in the room. Once again, my guy finished about 18th. He's seen anywhere from 15 to 18. No, I mean, it was 10th. Oh, 10th. Well, it's a little same thing. <laughs> Uh, but the other guy I root for, Joey Logano, did win it, so he took home a million dollars last night. And then, uh, uh, you know, first lap of the race, my guy gets a little frustrated because Ricky Stenhouse wants to pull in between him, and he hit the wall and got frustrated and wrecked him, and so he's out of the race first lap. Well, ironically, you can't leave the track. It's one of those tracks you're locked in until uh, the race is over because there's no – underpass to drive under to get out your hauler out and go home. That's what a lot of times those guys wreck. They're off and running going home before the next race. But Ricky Stenhouse did sit around for two hours and after the two hours he had a conversation with Kyle Bush that led to a right hand overhand right and a looked like a undercut left and uh smoked him twice. So 
Oh, Rowdy wasn't too right. He got knocked over the tires, so not only did he get beat up on the track, he got beat up after the track. So I got to, it's my guy. Got to take it. My guy got four after going and qualifying. I, for Indy. I, got, I got to give her props. Uh, Kyle Larson is a stud. He qualified at Indy, ran 233 miles an hour, which set the record for a rookie all time lowest. Uh, time trial in the Indianapolis 500. So next week, her guy, maybe I'll get a chance. Next week, her guy is driving 1,100 miles. He's driving the Indianapolis 500 and the Coca-Cola 600. That's 1,100 miles he's going to drive. So maybe he'll get tired and my guy may pass him <laughs> once. So I have a question. So Star's driver, was Star, like, always with this driver? Did she just hop she on just him when he got bandwagoned him? No, I did not. She did. Her guy was Chase not, uh, no, Chase Elliott, and no. then he's been struggling. So she jumped on number Whatever. five. My guy was Clint Boyer. He retired. I still love Clint Boyer. So then I had to pick a new driver. and He was winning was, all the no, time. No, he wasn't winning. Oh, he was coming back that year after being in trouble mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. And then, so that's the year I hopped on board with him, his first year back. And I've been with him ever since. Blah, blah, blah. So don't, don't be bad because I think winners <laughs> are the <dope. laughs> He is number five. That's probably why he's winning. <laughs> Your guy did used to win. I have to give him props there. He used to dominate, but then now he's a chicken or something. Yeah, Xander Shoffley also finished a, uh, the last 18 holes of a tournament and wound up winning his first major PGA championship. That's right. Congratulations to him. Shot a 65 to do it. Oof. Did Shoot a 65. Go to jail after he was there? I don't know if he did or not. <laughs> Scotty Sheffield no, got early. arrested. You know, yeah, they were told, third. they've been, you know, uh, PGA tells those guys if there's uh, if there's traffic, avoid safely and get around it and go on about your business. Didn't work the other yeah, night no, for no. Scotty Sheffield. It doesn't always work that way. No. <laughs> All right. Anything else we need to hit today, Coach? We better thank those sponsors. Auto Glass Magic, Bruner Auto Group, Syntex Body and Paint, Syntex Equipment Sales, Citizens National Bank, Dan Hill Containers, Dr. Bon Young, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company, Edward Jones Investments, Henrik Medical, Howie Enterprises, Hunt Repeats, Heartland Funeral Home, Landmark Admin, MC Bank, Painter Johnson Associates, Smiths and Sharp Agency, Sonic Drive-In, Stanley Chrysler, Texas Bank, Weldon Wilson Electric, Western Bank, and Willie's Tea. I was taking my time. I appreciate them for what they do, so I figured I'd slow down a little bit, make sure I got them all pronounced properly. Good job. Thank you. Place to be, so, I mean, no, I'm just going to run back over and yeah, do some 7 on 7. No deal. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we will be back here Wednesday on the Brownwood Lions Coach Show, hopefully to preview a little Mineral Well 7 on 7 here on KOXE, KOXE.com, and the KOXE app. Have a great day, Brownwood.